Good morning, class. Today is Monday, April 20th, 2020. What's the weather like today? What's it like outside? I hope everybody has a great day. Okay, class. Today we're going to take three pages out of our red workbook with the rip out pages. So it's going to be 235, 237, and 239. So go ahead and rip those out of your out of your red workbook and then fold your little story in half. And we'll be ready to go. The letters O R, O R E, and O A R make the sounds you hear in four, more, and board. Circle the word that answers the riddle, then underline the letters that spell the or sound, as in four more or board. Number one, you need to buy things. Where do you go? Do you go to a store or a star? You go to a store, so we need to underline O-R-E. O-R-E. Number two, I put on my hat. What did I do? Did I give or did I wore? Which one has the or sound? War, right? O R E. Number three. There is rain and wind. What is it? Is it a storm or steam? Storm or or. O R, underline O R and circle it. Number four, we go out and see new things. What did we do? Did we explore or did we bore? If you're going out finding new things, that's called explore. So underline O R E. Number five, Leo spoke. What did Leo do? Did he fetch or did he roar? Roared. O A R can also make the or sound. Okay, let's turn it to 236. So these are high frequency words. We have began, say began, say better, say guess, say learn, say right, and say sure. Number one. Can you blink what is in the box? Can you began what is in the box? Does that make sense? No. Can you better what's in the box? No, that doesn't make sense either. Can you guess? Yeah, can you guess? G-U-E-S-S -S, and then cross it off. Number two, I am blank. I will do well on my test. I am began. No, I am better. I am learn. I am sure, yeah, I am sure I will do better on my test. S-U-R-E, sure. Number three, mom blank to cut the cake. Mom began to cut the cake? Yes. Be ah, mm, began. All right, you guys have three more to do. Try to do that on your own. And then we'll do page 237. Okay, this is page 237. An idea is a picture you see in your head. For example, I have a good idea for this story. So an idea is a picture you have in the head, in your head. Something that is unusual is not common. What an unusual hat you have. So something that's not usual is uncommon. Like this lady has a birdcage hat, right? Okay, so we're going to write down idea or unusual. Number one, Dan has an blank for fixing the vase. Dan has an idea or an unusual? He has an idea. Okay, so we're going to write down idea. Number two, that is an blank house. So this house right here, is that an idea house or an unusual house? That's an unusual house. It's not common, right? Would that be a cool house to have, a rocket ship house? 
I'm going to let you guys do three and four on your own using the word idea or unusual. Next, you guys are going to need your good ideas story and this problem and solution chart. This one is page 238. All right, let's point to the title. Ready? Good ideas. Good ideas. Help me read. Ready, go. Anyone can invent. Ben Franklin invented a stove and glasses. But even kids can invent. Here is one true story. Ready, go. KK liked winter. She liked to play outside. But her hands got so cold in the snow, she wanted to spend more time in the snow. KK had a good idea. She made a fleece cuff, but it did not work too well. It still let snow in. Ready, go. KK made some changes. The cuff worked much better than before. Soon, lots of people wore her cuff. KK's idea was a hit. Okay, so now we're going to do page 238. And it says fill in the problem and solution chart. Okay? All right, so in this story, it says anyone can invent. Here's a true story. This story is about KK. But there is a problem. Let's find the problem. KK liked winter. She liked to play outside. But her hands got so cold in the snow. So what's the problem? KK's hands... So we're going to do a capital to start our sentence. K, K, apostrophe, S, K, K's hands got too cold in the snow, period. K, K's hands got too cold in the snow. So what's, how is she going to help? What's the step to solve this problem? She wanted to spend more time in the snow. KK had a good idea. She made a fleece cuff, but it did not work too well. It still let snow in. So what was the first step that she did? KK made a fleece Cuff, comma, but it still let snow in, period. KK made a fleece cuff, but it still let snow in. So how did she fix that? Let's read page four. KK made some changes. The cuff worked much better than before. Soon lots of people wore her cuff. KK's idea was a hit. So KK made changes. And the cuff worked better. Period. Now, if you guys want to word these a little bit differently, that's okay. All right. So next, if you guys can get out your math workbooks, or if you need to print them off the Dropbox, we're going to do the check my progress for chapter eight. It's page 587 and 588. And then we're also going to do Chapter 8, Lesson 5, Telling Time to the Hour Analog. And this one goes all the way to page 592. So if you want to pause the video and get those out, go ahead and do that. If not, here we go. So we're going to do our vocabulary. So everyone say length and then say unit. 
Okay, so you can use cubes and paper clips to measure. Each cube or paper clip is one, what, what's that called? Unit, say unit. You can measure, number two, you can measure how long an object is or it's, what's that called? You guys remember? Length. Number three, circle the shorter object. Which one's shorter? The chalk, right? What about number four? Which one's shorter? Skateboard. Okay, so we're gonna write one for short, two for shorter, and three for shortest. Okay, so this one's short, so we're gonna put a number one. But this one's shorter, the blue one's shorter, and the orange chalk is the shortest. Okay, let's flip it. Number six, order the objects by length. Write one for long, two for longer, and three for longest. Hmm, it's close, right? Number one is long. I mean, the glue stick is number one, and then the scissors are a little bit longer, but the paintbrush is the longest. All right, so about how many um, counting cubes, connecting cubes would fit onto this highlighter? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, about six, five or six. Gia, number eight. Gia has a box, a globe, and an apple. The box is longer than the globe. The globe's longer than the apple. So is the apple longer than or shorter than the box? Shorter, right? Okay, here's our test practice. Which object is longer than the pencil? What is it the pen? No, the stapler? The eraser? The paints? Ding, ding, ding. You're the winner. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. So our essential question is, how do I determine length and time? What does the clock say? It says, time flies when you're having fun. So this one's called an analog clock, right? So Robbie has band practice that starts at 3 o'clock. So we're going to show that time. So three, we're going to put the small hand at the three. And the long minute hand is going to be at the 12. The practice is over at five. Okay, so the practice is over at five. <laughs> so show that time. Chase the hands to show. So how many hours is between? So three to four would be one hour and four to five would be two hours, right? Let's turn it over. There are two kinds of clocks. This is an analog clock. The hour hand is shorter. So the red hand right here is the, called the hour hand. It's shorter. And the longer hand is called the minute hand. So right now it's three o'clock. Three, three o'clock. So what time would it be on this one? Nine o'clock. Nine, nine o'clock. Two o'clock. Two, two o'clock. Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock. Six o'clock. Six, six o'clock. Where are the hour hand and the minute hand when it's four o'clock? Well, you know what? Let's draw a picture. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six. So remember the hour hand's the short one, so they want four o'clock. So we're gonna put a little hand at the four, and the minute hand is gonna be longer. It's gonna be at the 12. So that shows us, oops, sorry, that shows us four o'clock. Okay. All right, this one right here, they want you guys to do on your own. Let's go ahead and do the back together. Ava gets home at three o'clock. Evan gets home one hour later. What time does Evan get home? So what's after three? What's after three? One hour later would be four o'clock, okay? So put your hour hand at the four and your long minute hand at the 12. Four 
o'clock. Evan gets home. <laughs> Number 14. Roger begins reading books at 7 o'clock. He reads for one hour. So what time did he stop? So one hour. What's one hour after 7? 8. So put the short hand at the 8. That's called the hour hand. And the long hand goes up to the 12. 8 o'clock. Okay. Antonio tried to set the hands on his clock for 9 o'clock. Tell why Antonio's wrong. What did he do wrong? Do you guys know? What? He did 1245. Remember the red, the short hand's supposed to be at the nine and the long minute hand's supposed to be at the 12. Huh. So we can write he mixed up the hour and minute hands. Silly, huh? Mixed them up. They're backwards. Flip it. Got it? Okay, class, if you guys have your science book out, the one with the dolphin, we're going to open it up to page 192. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to open your book up to page 192. Okay, I'm going to read this together. You ready? Life cycle of a plant. A life cycle is the stages a living thing goes through during its life. A watermelon plant begins as a seed. Then it grows into a small plant. The plant changes. It grows into an adult plant. Draw the missing arrow in the life cycle. So you guys are, all you guys need to do is make the young plant, and we're gonna make an arrow. Goes to the adult plant, and then the adult plant will get fruit with seeds. And then those seeds will start all over. It's a little cycle. Okay, let's read one more page together, ready? Animals have life cycles too. A tapir is an animal that lives in the forest. A young tapir will grow and change. It will look like its parents. It will have offspring or young of its own. Okay, so first we have the adult. Sorry, first we have the newborn. We'll go into a young tapir, which will go into the adult and then they'll have their own babies again, okay? Circle the main idea, underline two details. So the main idea is that animals have life cycles, right? And then tell me two details. I'm gonna do, um, it's gonna have offspring of its own, and I will do a young tapir will grow and change. Okay, and then down, down here it says, tell how the newborn top here changes. Do you guys see how it changes? Look how adorable. Is it small when it's a newborn? Yeah, and look at its fur. It's got some stripes, and then it gets bigger, and then it kind of loses its strip. Even its nose gets a little bit bigger. Do you guys notice that, or its snout? Those funny looking animals are kind of cool, right? Okay, have a great day, you guys. Don't forget to read a book by yourself.